Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. They've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed. We are live from L.A. I'm Jenny Taft here with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning, Jenny. Now I hope Aaron Rodgers does go to your Denver Broncos (laughs) so he can crumble under playoff pressure for your team and see how you like it. That transcendent thrower of the football. Oh, I tell you, I know one thing. He'll beat the Cowboys. Oh. We own the Cowboys. Aaron Rodgers owned the Cowboys. Well, he owned two teams. He owned the Bears and the Cowboys. Really? Well, Teddy Bridgewater <laughs> owned the Cowboys this year, right? <laughs> and in New Orleans. Yeah, he did. You know, okay, I, you got me on that. I, was thinking, I don't Shannon, really care. This might be a first for starting the show with Broncos. Today. Yeah, the Bronco Day. Gotta get your Bronco country here. everywhere. Okay, <laughs> everywhere. all right. Well, yeah. in a surprising move, the Broncos are reportedly finalizing a deal with Packers offensive coordinator Nathaniel Hackett to become their next head coach. And according to Fox Bet Sportsbook, Denver was already the favorite to land Aaron Rodgers if he left Green Bay, and snagging his OC certainly. Couldn't hurt those odds. So, Shannon, the phrase Rodgers to Denver started trending on Twitter shortly after the news. So what does this mean for Aaron Rodgers? Well, it looks more and more likely, Skip, that he's heading the arrows or pointing in that direction. Skip, you know, sometimes you go to the doctor's office and they have the arrows pointing where they want you to sign. Well, it seems like the arrows are pointing. That's the direction that Aaron Rodgers is going to sign. Now, that's what it seems like. Um all indication that he's, he, he likes uh, Nathaniel Hackett. Uh, God has been in that system. And Aaron Rodgers, obviously, Skip, you're going to want to go somewhere where you have some input on the offense. We've seen that over the past couple of years. We saw Peyton Manning do it. He had input. We saw Tom Brady do it just last year, Skip. And we see how it worked out well for both of those guys, Skip. Now, the situation is different in Green Bay than it was in those situations. I believe Peyton wanted to stay in Indy. They failed him on the physical. Mm-hmm. He left. I believe Tom Brady wanted to stay in New England. Coach Belichick said no. Mr. Kraft wanted to say yes, but Mr. Kraft had already made had intervened once before. Mm-hmm. Tom Brady moves on. We know how that ended up. So I believe when the situation with Denver and what they have offensively, Skip, a Courtney Sutton, a Tim Patrick, a Noah Fan, a Jerry Judy, Javante Williams, Skip, they're, they're, they have some talented young core players, and they need someone. I'm sorry. Teddy Bridgewater is, is, is a good player. Uh, Drew Locke, I just don't see what everybody else saw in him. But they need somebody that can maximize these guys' skill set. I believe Aaron Rodgers can get the absolute best. As we saw Peyton get the best out of L. DT, rest his soul. Mm. Eric Decker, Skip Julius Thomas. Uh, uh, we saw what Peyton Manning was able to do for those guys. Yep. And I believe that uh, Aaron Rodgers could do the same thing. Defensively, they're sound. Skip, they have great players on the defensive side of the football. I mean, some really good, I won't say great, really good young players on that side. They were third in scoring defense. So I believe they can find someone that can bring that unit together. But they need a more creative offense in mind. And I believe Nathaniel Hackett can bring that because we've seen what happened over the years. Mm. Where it seems to be going, Skip, you see the Sean McVay's, you see the Zach Taylor's, you see the Matt LaFleur's, you see the uh, even Kyle Shanahan when he got the job. These young, bright, creative offense in mind that can do a lot of different things, multiple formation, multiple sets, and, uh, and can get the most out of this young talent. So for me, Skip, and... I believe they have the assets of Green Bay, whatever Green, because they have an extra second, extra third from the Von Miller trade skip. So they have they have assets that if they need to get off some of those assets to get an Aaron Rodgers, I believe they have the assets. So the arrows are indicating that Aaron Rodgers is heading to the Midwest. Mm. Uh, we'll see how it plays out, but mm. I like my chances. <laughs> okay, so scale of one to ten, Aaron Rodgers to Denver would be a what on your scale? Eight and a half. Eight and a half. Yeah. I'm going to give it a one because I do not believe Aaron Rodgers wants to leave Green Bay. I think he wants to finish there. His comfort zone is in Green Bay. He once again is holding Green Bay hostage. (laughs) He has Packer Nation at his feet, kissing his feet once again. Please don't leave Aaron. And it's all a sympathy ploy and plea on the part of Aaron, who once again stunk it up in a big postseason game at Lambeau and got away with it by incredibly and immediately changing the narrative to I don't know if I'm going to play here next year or not. So here we go he again. Might, he, was, he might change his mind. He's like, hold on. 
Sean Sharp played for the Broncos. Oh. He re- I can't oh. go there. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, can't. I thought you said he was going to go nah, there. Nah, 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 nah. I can't go there. Okay. I, I will give you this. By all accounts, by everything Aaron has said, by what he said on the McAfee show just here recently, he loves Nathaniel Hackett. He's, yes. He's all in, bought in. So right. I'm going to give you that because he called what – Nathaniel did in Jacksonville pure magic because he was the play caller. He's not the play caller in Green Bay. Right. Let's, let's not. No, 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 no. Lafleur is. Let's not, as AB says, get that twisted. Yeah, right. Lafleur right. is the play caller. Correct. But Nathaniel Hackett was the play caller in Jacksonville, and they went to the fourth quarter at Foxborough in the AFC Championship game up twenty to ten, and then they got goaded. Right. Okay. But he did do that. He did call plays in Buffalo, so he's been around for a while, forty-two years of age. Mm-hmm. And not only does he buy in, but but Aaron called him a great coach. This is a long time coming. It's a little overdue. I love spending time with him. He's a fantastic teacher. He's incredible in front of the room, loves his energy as sort of a, uh, you know, like an unconventional style. He's just like his father, which leads me to a very quick aside. (laughs) Paul Hackett, very close friend of mine for a long, long time. So just to bring cowboy fans into this loop. Paul Hackett got hired out of San Francisco, where he was Montana's mentor. Mm -hmm. It was under the Bill Walsh system, obviously. But but again, Joe Montana and Paul Hackett were very close. And Tech Schramm, who then ran the Cowboys through the 80s, the late, great Tech Schramm, hired Paul Hackett to replace Tom Landry. But he was going to Tom was going to play it out for another year or two and then fade into the sunset and he hired Paul Hackett to be Landry's successor and guess what derailed that Gerald Wayne Jones Jr. (laughs) swooped in and bought the team from bum bright and said now I got to bring my guy Jimmy here which was fortuitous and probably the right way to go so Paul Hackett went on to coach head coach at Pitt and then USC and then he's the the OC at at Kansas City when Joe was there he he went back to Kansas City went with Joe they reunited and they did get to the playoffs AFC championship game they got to the AFC championship game against Buffalo Buffalo. and fell short in that game because Buffalo was just better yes okay so here's my point one night in 1986 I had dinner at Paul Hackett's house with his wife and him and I met their littlest son named Nathaniel, who was seven years of age. So this is like your Kyle Shanahan story. And as I watched them over those three years grow up, he had an older brother named David, who was the football player. And I went to David's high school playoff games at South Lake Carroll with Paul and his wife. Mm -hmm. And and it was all about David, who was a wide receiver. He was pretty good, went on and played some college football. But Nathaniel wasn't the football player. Right. Nathaniel went on to be the long snapper at Cal Davis, where Paul was a quarterback once right. upon a time. Not a very good one, but, but he, he was the right. starter at Cal Davis. Right. So Nathaniel was the long snapper. And it is surreal to me today to be sitting across from a Denver Bronco <laughs> Hall of Famer talking about little Nathaniel Hackett, who I didn't even think had any future in football whatsoever, right. mm-hmm. who is now the head, head coach, coach of the Denver Broncos. It's impossible. Right. It's surreal. It's it's not to be believed, but it happened. Right. And I think it did happen in large part because of Aaron Bleepin Rogers. Yes. I do believe that John Elway, and I think John Elway made this decision at mm-hmm. the top. Wouldn't you think he pulled the trigger? Well, I mean, that, he, he's, I mean, he still have, but I think he, uh, the uh, Patton, George Patton, yeah. I think that's the, the, the okay, general manager but, but, now. But John presides. He, yeah, he's okay. still there. All right. So the point is that they made a very calculated big gamble. Mm-hmm. It's calculated and right. it is high risk, high reward. Do I know that Nathaniel Hackett's going to be a great head coach? I have no idea. Right. I always tell you my pet peeve about your game is everybody always thinks, well, if you coordinate or call plays, that means you're going to be a great head coach. It has nothing to do with being a great head coach. I like it that Aaron's saying he can command a room. That's right. a start. Yes. That's big. Yes. Because some coordinators have no personality and they're just zeros right. as head coaches. Mm-hmm. See Mike McCarthy. <laughs> but the point is, that I think they took high risk with potential high reward yeah. because they're saying, okay, Nathaniel's 42. Let's see if he could coach this. And to your point, if you're, 
if, if he just serves as the offensive coordinator for the Broncos, in effect, right. that, that could be pretty great. Right. You know, that could be a, a big boost right. over what mm-hmm. you had. Because your defense is top 10-ish to yeah. me. It's, yeah. Right? They were third in scoring defense. Yeah, okay. So, so I'm, I'm going to give you that. Yeah. You, you can live with that. You just need a jolt. You need some new voltage right. on the offensive side. Right. And I think Nathaniel will bring that. Can he command the whole room, as in the whole football team? Right. Will they follow him? Will he be a commanding officer? Will he be a natural-born leader? I have no idea because I don't think any Anybody can know until you get that Correct. job. Right. His his father was a pretty good head coach, but he was a better coordinator. Yeah. Trust me, because Paul had some genius to him calling offense. Well, Skip, you know it's a copycat league. Yeah. You see the success I, they've I, had I, in I, Cincinnati. I, there's you, no doubt. You see what Sean McVay is doing. Yeah. You see what some of these other young guys are doing, Skip. And it's like, well, hold on. Look at this young talent. Okay, that, that but, but it's all designed in this case. Yes. To, to grease the skids yes, for Aaron Rodgers. Yes. If you can get there, right. would, would Aaron then favor the Broncos over whoever else it is, the Titans or whoever right. else? Mm-hmm. There'd be four or five teams coming. I don't know. Could be the 49ers. Could be right. anybody. Right. Would he be marketable? Sure, he'd have high market if, in fact, he were on the market. And yes. I'm not sure he's going to be. And then the other thing is about Aaron is it, it's not like he has a no trade clause. They have to agree to it. Yes. Like it's their choice, not Aaron's. Well, I believe they would, Skip. Uh, and plus, it's in the AFC. You're not trying to really try to yep. trade him within the conference. So you feel a lot better sending him to the AFC yep. and getting compensation in return. You're absolutely right. It's not like Tom Brady. Tom was free. Peyton Manning was free because once they signed, once they released Peyton, Peyton yep. was a free agent. So he got to hit the market. Brady's contract was up and the, and the uh, uh, Patriots couldn't franchise him. So he was totally free. In this situation, you're absolutely correct. It's totally different. He has one year. So in order for him to get anywhere, it's going to be hap- uh, uh, the, uh, the Packers going to have to receive compensation. And I believe they would be more apt to trade him out of the conference as opposed to within the conference. Okay. Package deal here could happen because the... The, the passing game coordinator for the Green Bay Packers is Luke Getze. I, I'm not that familiar with I, him, I, but I he's 37 it. years of age. Right. And now the speculation is because he got interviewed by Denver as a head coaching candidate. Right. They interviewed 10 candidates. Right. They interviewed my man Dan Quinn twice. Right. Yes. And out of the blue, it's Nathaniel Hackett. Well, will he bring Luke Getze as his then sort of oh, offensive see. coordinator. Or to me, Nathaniel's going to be the... Yeah, we're going to call the plays. I, I yeah, would think he would, yeah. wouldn't he? I yeah. don't know, unless he delegates. Well, I believe it was between two guys. I believe between DQ and I believe between Nathaniel Hackett. And okay. I think Hackett got the job because there's a greater chance that Aaron Rodgers would be more likely to come if he's familiar with someone on the offensive side of the football. Okay. So, all of a sudden, I'm looking down, and it looks like that you, you've you just hired your fourth different head coach since the start of the 2016 season mm-hmm. in Denver. You have been flailing, yeah, well, right? 11 starting quarterbacks since Peyton. Uh, 11? Tied Ty- really? with Washington football team. Okay. That explains why you haven't made the playoffs. Okay. So – do you really want an Aaron Rodgers who? Yeah, you, yeah, we want him. But you're you're out on him because you have come around to my point of view. Whoa, whoa, you were whoa. saying he always comes up small in the postseason. You give up. G- you, you give in to what I've been trying to tell you since we started this show. Bronco country would just want to get to the playoffs. Then we'll worry about where he comes up short, tall, medium, big, whatever yep. the case may be. Okay. It's been so long since they've been to the playoffs. Yep. You forget, okay, when Peyton got to, okay, they won the last year with Tebow. That was 2011. And then you have four straight years of winning the division. So five straight years, you won the division. Two years, you went to the uh, uh, Super Bowl. You won one. Yep. So, hey, just get back to that. They're tired of... Six and ten, or what not? Whatever they finished last year, what was it, seven and eight, eight and nine, or whatever the case may be, Skip. They're tired of that. I'm tired of that. I want to talk about my team too. Okay. I'll be talking about everybody else's team. I want to talk about the Broncos. Okay. The last three times you hired a first-time head coach, that would be Josh McDaniels, that would be Vance Joseph, that would be your latest guy, Fangio. Yeah. None of those three even made the playoffs one time. Well, here's the thing. It's all everything. Look. You can. I don't care who your coach is. If you don't have a quarterback, you're not going anywhere. Lombardi, Belichick, whomever you think of the great head coach, Coach Walsh, it does not matter. Sean Payton. Without that guy, you're not doing anything. Mm-hmm. Okay. But with that guy, Aaron Rodgers, do you want to strap Bronco Nation? Yep, I sure do. Crumbles under pressure yep. in the postseason. Yep. He's seven and nine since he won I that want to get long to the ago postseason. Super Bowl. That's all you Can want to do. Can we get to the postseason? Get to the postseason. Yeah. 
And Hold on. Why you, why you want to talk? What about your team? What y'all doing in the playoffs? We're not talking about my team. We're talking about orange right now. Yeah. I hate orange. Yeah, I, hate, no, don't worry, don't worry. I hate the color of your uniforms. You I, I don't like anything about them. You know I hate Texas uniforms. I hate Oklahoma State's uniforms because they're my arch rivals from Oklahoma, and I hate your uniforms. Since we've been on this sh- doing yeah. this show together, mm-hmm. you know what we've done to your team, right? Uh, all I know is my team faced your team in a Super Bowl once upon a time, and Skip what happened? Skip what happened? They have faced each other in a Super Bowl one time that I can remember, and what happened? Skip, do you understand how Butch long this Johnson happened Skip, that was to you? 44 years right? ago. <laughs> Leroy Neiman painted it. it what about any turnover? You want to talk about any turnover that I, the Broncos had? I don't had? care. I don't care. That's what happens at the highest level when Dallas <laughs> oh, meets Denver. Am I right? I believe, Skip, look, you – you believe he's going to stay in Denver. You believe this is a in, whole. In Green Bay. Excuse me, yep. Green Bay. Yep. But you believe this is a whole a lot to do about nothing. I do. That, that he's been selling this. I, and I, he's I, been- I can't condemn Elway slash Peyton, whoever it is. Mm-hmm. It's Patton, I guess. You is it Peyton or Patton? Patton. Remember, people say it George in different Patton. ways. Okay. George Patton is in the general, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Whoever made that decision, I can't condemn them because it's worth the shot. Right. Just to try to, to point to your point, make the playoffs. Right. Because obviously, would Aaron turn them into a playoff team? I would hope so. Yeah. Even though that division ain't no cakewalk. Yeah. Right. That, yeah. That's what you want. And it's it's only going to get harder. Let's give. Let me ask you a question. We understand that Justin Herbert's in that division. Patrick Mahomes is in that division. Derek Carr is in that division. He is. If I were to give Aaron Rodgers a lot of take the test and ask him, who do you think the best quarterback if you're in that division is? What do you think he's going to say himself? So the guy, those guys, when you become a guy like that, you're very confident in your own ability, and rightfully so. Okay, but I'll ask Shannon Sharp that and put him on a lie detector right, right here, right now. In the postseason, would you trust Patrick Mahomes or Aaron Rodgers? Oh, I'm Rogers? telling you, I'm t- oh, my homeboy, of Thank course. You. Thank yeah, you. it's not even close okay. in the playoffs. All right, but you're just saying Aaron Rodgers is an upgrade over Bridgewater, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Drew Locke or whom Trevor Simeon, Brock Osweiler, go on and all the quarterbacks that's come since then. Okay. Yeah, he's an upgrade over all of them. Okay. I would like to just send a message to Bronco Nation right here, right now, that you, if, if you land Aaron Rodgers, you better be ready playoffs. for this. You better be ready for first and goal at the oh, eight. There you go, Mr. Well, I, I want to show you what's going to happen. This could be at mile high. First and goal at the eight. You're down <laughs> 31 to 20. What, what Aaron, what, what was that? To Lazard, he just airmailed it. This is to Devontae. Man, that Aaron, was two years ago. Aaron, you just threw it in the first row. What, what was that? Man, Aaron, maybe you should take you off keep- and run. Should you run? Should you run? No, I'm going to force it back across my body to a double cover Devontae at the goal line. Incomplete, Matt LaFleur, Fleur, the boy wonder head coach says, I've seen enough of Aaron Bleep and Rodgers. I take the field goal. I take 31-26. That's what you're in store for yes. because this man consistently, routinely chokes in the postseason. He has come up very small mm-hmm. based on what he's been able to do in the regular season. But we us in Bronco country, we accept all of that. Mm-hmm. We'll, 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 we will allow him, if that's the case, come up small for us in the playoffs. Mm. I don't believe that's going to happen. Maybe a change of scenery mm. is what he needs. Get you know what? I don't believe he wants the pressure, the added pressure of suddenly becoming the savior for your Denver Broncos. Yeah. I don't think he wants to be the savior for the Titans or the 49ers. He's in his comfort zone because he now has Packer Nation kissing his you-know-what once again. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's what happened. Okay. But how did, let me ask you a question. The first year after um, Brady left, how did, how did, how did New England look? Mm. So uh, we're going to see how Green Bay look. They got their guy. They're going to have their guy, Jordan Love, the one that they traded up for. So I'm sure he wants to see, like, yeah, he wants to. I think a part of him wants to leave. Because he wants to see Jordan Love fall in his face. He wants Maybe. to see the he wants to see the Packers suffer. Yep. I, I agree right. with you. Green Bay is stuck in damned if you do and damned if you don't. Because <laughs> if you do, it'll probably repeat itself. History will repeat in the postseason once again, and he'll have some home field advantage that he will squander. But, right? but I think the thing you'll skip is that when someone is publicly flirting with elsewhere. It, I want to leave. It's almost like someone is flirting publicly and you're doing everything you can to keep said individual. You do everything, new car, ring, you buy him nice paddock or yep. whatever the case may be. At some point in time, you just got to let it go. So you know what? I'm done with this. Yep. You, ma- hey, you made it abundantly clear. I'm not the one that you want. 
okay, I'm going to allow you to go find someone that you can be happy with, and I'm going to be happy with what I what I have over here. Mm. Skip, I don't know what else Aaron can do. Skip, at some point in time, you can't just let this man keep, well, I might retire, I might not retire. Mm. I might stay here, I might not stay here. I might leave, I, I, I might, come on, Skip. Mm. This is the NFL. Mm. You, can't let, you can't let an individual hold your whole franchise, your whole organization hostage. No, you can't. So I want to get this straight once and for all before we proceed. You want that blame-deflecting, finger-pointing diva who is Aaron Rodgers to be your Bronco quarterback, Hold correct? On. You left us off. I want that smug, condescending, aloof, arrogant, narcissistic, lying Aaron Rodgers to be my quarterback in Denver, okay? You want the immunized Aaron Rodgers yep. to be your quarterback, yep. right? Yeah, The sure quote-unquote immunized. Yep. You that. want the quarterback who is immunized against winning in the postseason yep. to be your quarterback. I want him to be right? my quarterback and Bronco country will welcome him with open arms. Mm. Yes, we want all that. Mm. That lying, smug, narcissistic, aloof, condescending, immunized, whatever you want to call him. Yes, because we had a lot of guys that was immunized, that would tell you the truth, that was very outgoing, that's not narcissistic, that can't play a lick of quarterback. Yep. The one thing, all those things that I used to describe him, the one thing I else can, can use to describe him, he's transcendent. Mm. He's great. So the one word I will now describe the Denver Broncos <laughs> as is desperate. Okay, and? Desperate. Thank you. Hold on. What do you think Tampa is? They talk about, oh, we'd be pleasantly surprised if we had happily, presently. But oh, what you think they're going to be? We're going to see what they're going to be if Tom Brady doesn't come back. We'll see if they're, if they're desperate. Well, they would be. Now, they know it. They Whoa. know it. But now, you know what? They have a Super Bowl to show for it in the last two years. We, right? we, we, I love what's to say we can't get because you saw what happened with Peyton. Mm. Peyton brought us a Super Bowl. There is no way Aaron Rodgers is Peyton. Now, well, 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 Skip, hold on. All I'm saying is what if he delivers? It changed the way people looked at Peyton Manning. He was the first to do it. Yeah, but he'd already won a Super Bowl. Uh, Aaron Rodgers already won one. Mm. Might go get another one. Go get another one with the Bronco, the nation. Mm. I, hey, as a matter of fact, Skip, I might pick them to be the Super Bowl favorite. He go there. <laughs> really? That's what I might do. Mm. Over your, I tell you what, they'll go further than your. They'll have a better record than your Bronco. Now we can bet that. And my Cowboys. Then right? your Cowboys, yeah. Mm. Let's bet that. If Aaron Rodgers end up in Green Bay, they'll have a uh, the Broncos will have a better record than your Cowboy. Not if Sean Payton's my head. Coach. I don't care, oh, Sean. Hey, Sean Payton, Gary Payton. I don't care. Mm. <laughs> the Broncos. I'll have take a Gary Payton over Mike McCarthy <laughs> right here, right now, and when glove we're it. Talking about Just coaching, glove it. we're talking about the Broncos. That yeah, he's back. He's back. The Broncos about to be it again. No mercy. Well, Antonio Brown went on social media posting a picture on a Twitter of him in a. Baltimore uniform for their pushing, you know, his push to join his hometown friend Lamar Jackson on the Ravens, which we know that by now. He's also been on the interview tour lately trying to clear his name, speaking with Frank Gumbel on HBO earlier this week. We discussed yesterday and Nate Burleson on CBS this morning. So, Shannon, will A.B. play in the NFL next year? I told Skip this when he did it. Mm. I said, Skip, somebody go sign him. Someone's going to talk themselves into this situation. I just hope... I don't care if A.B. gets signed. As long as it's not the Ravens or the Broncos, he can go to any of the 30 other teams, mm. just not those two. Mm. Anywhere else, have at it. You want to go back to Tampa, go at it. You want to go back to Pittsburgh, you want to go to Oakland, New England, I'm good. Seattle, I do not care. But, Skip, that's, that's just how it is because it's still production over tolerance. They still believe he can play. And he can play. He played, he played very well when, when, when he was healthy. Uh, the first half of the season. Now, I don't know to the extent. I mean, they, you know, I, I've been listening to the interviews and he had loose particles and he had a detached ligament. So it's hard to gauge. Um, he had those same has had those same injuries when he got targeted 15 times for 10 catches. All of a sudden, you're not getting 15 targets. You don't have 10 catches. Yep. It hurts a little more. I get it. But for me, Skip, I don't I don't. I don't see it happening in Baltimore. Yeah. Do I see another team, one of the other teams that he hasn't already played for, giving uh, Antonio Brown an opportunity? I do, because they're going to talk themselves into it. They'll get a little desperate. They'll need a receiver, and he'll be on his best behavior when he come in for the interview. And they'll they're like, okay, we'll give them a, give him this opportunity. But Skip, unless you've been a wide receiver or a tight end. And I played the lion's share of my career. Okay, I played my whole career in a run-first offense. 
You look at Mike Shanahan's yeah. offense, Skip, it was run first. Yep. You look at when I was with, in Baltimore, it was run first. It was actually defense first, but go <laughs> ahead. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Okay, it was defense, yeah. run, okay, then we'll pass yeah. on third down. Mm-hmm. It's different yep. when you're not going in the game and you know your quarterback's not going to throw 40 passes. And then if he throws 25 passes, 10 of the targets going to Mark Andrews. Probably five or six of them going to hit the dirt. Another three or four sail over the guy's head. Yep. You're asking for a bad situation if you're the Ravens. Do I believe Antonio Brown is going to play next year, Skip? I do. I said that at the time that he did it, someone was going to give him an opportunity. I didn't think it was going to be this year because it had been too much damage, and he's saying his, his ankle was one of the reasons why he didn't play <clears throat> because of his ankle. Even I, uh, even Josina Anderson said if A.B. wanted a job, he can have a job. Okay, I don't know to the extent of that was true, Skip, but I do believe Antonio Brown is going to play in the NFL next year because they saw what he did earlier in the season. They saw that one game once he came back off that injury, mm-hmm. and someone's going to give him an opportunity. I don't care if A.B. is in the NFL. That won't bother me a bit. I just don't want him to ruin the two teams that I played for. <laughs> okay, but you want to talk about both sides of your mouth. You're saying somebody's going to be stupid enough to yes. try this, right? Yeah, I just hope it's not the Broncos or the Ravens. <laughs> that's, that's one side. I'm talking about the front. One side. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but why would anybody else? If if you are protecting your Broncos yeah. and your Ravens, yeah. then why should another GM say, well, I, I want some of that? Skip, I just think the thing, the way what they're trying to build in in Denver, I don't <laughs> think it's a fit. I don't think it's a fit. The culture. You can say they, 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 and I've seen on the internet, well, they welcome Ray Lewis with open arms and they re- welcome Terrell Suggs with open arms, but they were team first guy. I didn't mention it. I don't care. Look, he did what he did. I do care because there are some things that he did off the field that's, that's documented, that's unacceptable. And I get that. I get that. But I'm talking about in the team. Once you come into the building, what's your behavior like? Yep. That's what I'm judging him on. I'm not judging the throwing the furniture, what may or may not have happen, you know, the the, the charges with the the, uh, the painter and yep. uh, staff mm-hmm. or some of the other women, how he treated his wife. Skip, I, I set that to the side, mm-hmm. although I shouldn't. I'm talking about once you arrive at uh, Under Armour, at the facility in Baltimore, what's his behavior then? When he's in Pittsburgh, in the facility, when he's in Oakland, in the facility, when he's at Tampa, in the facility. Now, Skip, you remember, he, I don't know if you saw it, though, but he was saying something about uh, uh, Nate Burleson was asking him. He said, you know, but we're a brotherhood. You know, we watch out for each other. We family. He what said, I didn't feel like they were my brothers. He did not. That's what he said. I got you. Okay, so can we also cross off your list, the Buccaneers, yes. the Steelers, yes. the Raiders, yes. and the Patriots? Okay, so you're down to 16. So that's 16 that's off the okay. list. So there's another skill. There's 26 still out there now. Yeah. Okay, this is my final takeaway today after what I saw from the Nate Burleson interview on top of all the others that he has done. Right. On top of him campaigning all day yesterday on social to be a Raider. Right putting himself, photoshopping himself Mm -hmm. into Ravens purple. Right. I believe A.B. thinks he's on a victory tour over America through the media, Mm -hmm. and I believe it has become a farewell to the NFL tour. I do not think anybody's going to take the risk on him now because I believe he has officially talked his way completely out of the league, and I'm, I'm from my heart, I hope I'm wrong about that. But I've been doing this for a long time, and I know these decision makers who Mm -hmm. run these teams. And I get you, production over tolerance. But as he turns 34 years of age with a bad ankle that I thought required surgery, but none has happened that I'm aware of, right? right. So I'm not sure where to put all that into that perspective. But to your point, the, uh, the production is starting to get even with tolerance. Production needs to be up here for tolerance to be here. They start to get even. You just burned the bridge, Antonio, with the goat. You just attacked the goat and then tried to sort of kiss and make up via social with the goat. Right. And it won't play well around the league. Right. If he, if he couldn't work it out with Brady, then how can he work it out with anybody else? Because Brady took him under his wing, 
Brady was his angel, his benefactor, his protector, his defender. Bra- Brady was his biggest, greatest brother, right? Mm-hmm. He, he was everything Antonio could have wished for. And to his credit, to Antonio's credit, last year for those last eight games that he played for the Buccaneers, he was, dare I say, quiet. Yeah. He was on his best behavior. Right. I think he was a model citizen because right. I didn't hear anything about it. Right. He didn't play in two playoff games, right. but he did play in the Super Bowl against Kansas City, and he caught a touchdown. Right. On Honey Badger, because Brady wanted to get even with Honey Badger. Right. Okay, so good. Good right. for you. So you got a ring. You earned a ring. And and then you blew up another situation. And you didn't just blow it up. You nuclear <laughs> blasted it. You, you blew it up the way nobody's ever right. blown it up before. And yet, with Nate Burleson this morning, he, he is still doubling down on, it was about my ankle. He said, yo, coach, I can't go. Well, the, everybody inside the Buccaneers is saying that wasn't it at all. It right. was about targets. Right. And you believe it was about targets. Yes. I believe it was about targets. I'm going to reiterate what happened in the first half at Jets that day. Remember, as you pointed out, the previous week at Carolina, A.B.'s return, he got 15 targets, caught 10 balls for 101. Mm-hmm. Now we look at what happened in the first half at Jets. All of a sudden, Gronk comes out of the doghouse, right. Brady's doghouse, gets six targets, catches five for 80 yards. That's a big half for anybody, but for Gronk at his advanced age, that right. was a big half. A.B. got five targets, only one short of Gronk, but he caught only three for 26. So all of a sudden, he's not happy with right. that. And my source close to A.B. told me that when Brady went over to check on him on the sideline just moments before the the big blow-up meltdown, that he said something like, well, I guess Gronk's your boy again. And and Gronk had been not featured the previous two games, and so it would make sense that he would say that to Brady. Right. And that Brady would sort of throw up his hands like... Oh, we're we doing yeah, this again. Yeah, here we go again. Right. Really? You're going to do this here now? Skip, but here's the thing. He said, Nate Burleson said, yeah, this is a tremendous run with the Steelers, you know. It doesn't end the way people expect. You go to Oakland, does it work out? Go to New England, does it work out? You land in Tampa. You do win a ring, but as we see right now, it didn't work out. For the people to say the common denominator is Antonio. Yeah, what do you say about that? A, B. I always do what's best for me, I mean. That's what it is. Okay, well, that's pretty honest, right? Thank you. Yeah. But here's the thing, Skip. Let's just say for the sake of argument, he still had a great relationship with Tom Brady. Tom retires. Hey, Tom, man, I'm trying to get on with this team. You know anybody at such and such? You know anybody <laughs> at Seattle? You know anybody at uh, 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 Kansas City? You know anybody? And, and the answer is yes, yes, yes. 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 Can you put a word in for no, me? No, no, no. No way. Ha, that, ha, ha. Skip, that, remember the relationship thing? Yep. You never, boy, Skip, one of the best say I told you, my grandpa says, hey, boy, be careful. He said, because the toe you step on today mm-hmm. might be connected to the foot that's on the leg that leads to the butt. You got to kiss tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You see? Your grandfather was a wise yeah, man. Yeah, you, he that, was Confucius meets Gandhi. That's how you yep. treat people. Skip, yep. you never know who you're going to ask to do you a favor. Now, you don't gave them your butt to kiss, and now you need a favor, and you, you expect them to like, well, hold on. You remember like a year ago, three years ago, five years ago, ten years ago, you gave me your butt to kiss. Now you need me. <sighs> Skip, I, I, don't, I don't get it. I, I don't get why he would do that. So back to the mental health issue. It's a slippery slope. Yes. I'm not a psychiatrist. I don't know. I don't yeah. even know what to make of it. I don't even try to play one on TV either. Thank you. And yet Nate asked him again about mental health. Right. And... Antonio's answer today on CBS was, I never had a mental health diagnosis. I never had an issue or a problem. I don't take pills. I just got a high IQ. I don't know. Maybe he does. Right. But by many accounts, from Bruce Arians to Tom Brady to our man James Harrison, who sat here as he melted down and was forced out of Pittsburgh. Right. James Harrison, his big brother figure in Pittsburgh, said, I believe he needs help, as in some sort of counseling, right? Right. Tom Brady said, I hope he gets the help that he needs. Bruce Aarons, I hope he gets the help he needs. So they're all suggesting 
that he did need some right. sort of counseling. And he said, well, I tried it under the NFL guidelines, but but it didn't work for me because they don't get me. Right. Because- he says, I don't like some random people. Right. Well, that's how therapy is supposed to work. You're supposed to have somebody that have that's unbiased. OK, but the- he's saying they come from the palace. I came from the pit, right. which is the, the, the title of his right. rap song. OK, but right. I get it. I, I do get that because he's saying through their eyes, they're, they're seeing me very differently than somebody who from who came from the pit where I came from would see me. Right. Yeah. But here's the thing, Skip, is that when you leave the pit. And all of a sudden you're in the palace. You're not supposed to behave like you're still in the pit. <laughs> That's the whole purpose of getting out the pit so you can get to the palace. Couldn't you speak to that? Yes. Person? Yes. I understand. Skip, I understand. As even if it was, when it wasn't me, it was my brother. There are certain things that I couldn't do. I couldn't say because I was a represent, re- representative of him. Now when the shoe's on my foot, yep. I couldn't behave like I could mm-hmm. when I was basically no one knew who I was. All the things that I could do. You understand that? That's the whole purpose, Skip. Everybody's talking about, how do I get the bag? Man, I'm trying to get the bag. Okay, you get the bag. Why you want to mess up the bag? I'm going to try to get the bag as long as I can. Well, you keep talking about, he got the bag in Oakland. Yes! Well, he he could have had the bag, Mm -hmm. but he fumbled the bag. He did? Three years, 50 million. The first two years was guaranteed. Mm -hmm. Make it a Tuesday, and you get, release me. I'm free. I'm free. What person you know, Skip? Would, would, would forego $30 million to play on a minimum deal, okay, I got two point five. <laughs> what guy you know that says, you know what, I would rather make $2.5 million as opposed to $30 million? Because I got to be me. Thank you. Right? And everybody look at A.B. free. Mm-hmm. A.B. A, smart. A.B. knew what he was doing because look what he did. He got out of Oakland and went to New England. Mm. Are y'all high? What jo- would you leave your job? For a 30 million, making 15 million a year to go get a job making 2 million a year. And people say, oh, that was a smart decision. That was the best thing you could have done. Mm. <laughs> what? People actually thought he thought that far in advance. That's the problem. He doesn't think that far in advance. He thinks right now. Mm. What's the best? What can I do right now? Mm. Would you turn on Tom Brady? No, I'm not. Under fire? He, he, as bad as it got at that moment? You're going to get your incentives because you know he's got your back. Skip. He, come on. Here's, here's the thing, Skip. Look, I know I got the, one of the main reasons that I got made the final roster in Denver was because of seven. I know that. John he, told, he told Dan, mm-hmm. Dan, he's raw, but he can play. Okay. Let's find a place for him. Let him play special teams. Well, what to- if he hadn't said that? Who knows I, what I'm not in Denver. Happen? I don't know. What would My happen? contract up in 96. Yep. Mike was like, well, they transition, they transition yeah. tagged me, which means I was going to get the top 10 salaries of the tight ends. John's like, Mike, I need it. Mike, do you realize what the guy just did? Yeah. And he did that on the bum ankle. The guy went and got 80 catches, 1,000 yards, and double-digit touchdowns. Those guys aren't laying around. If John Elway doesn't vouch for you, is it possible you don't make the Hall of Fame? I don't know if I make the NFL. That's what I mean. I'm definitely yeah. not making the Denver Broncos. No. Nope. So you have relationships. Yep. So why 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 would you someone that, that stuck their neck out for you? Guys that have you vouch for me. You! What the hell you think I'm here? Oh man, you but Shannon, Sh- Sh- he really know? Okay, yeah, I can always debate. I always can talk. Mm. But the man vouched for me, stick skip Baylor stuck his neck out on the line for me. I did. So why, why would I mess up that relationship? Yep. Knowing that even, even if we went our separate ways 10 years from now. Hey, Skip, you know somebody at this net, they got this new network coming up. Uh, you know anybody over there? As a matter of fact, Shannon, I do. I work with a guy once upon a time. He's the producer over there. Let me give him a call. Mm. People don't, why, I don't know why we only think about right now and nobody thinks about, you know what, a relationship in the future. Mm. I, I don't get it, A.B., but everybody's like, man, ain't bad. Shannon, you just hard on A.B. What about A.B. being hard on himself? Why are you asking me to be more, more lenient on A.B. than you ask A.B. of himself? Mm. That's what I don't get with people. That's what I don't get. And I had a lot of even NFL players get, hit me up. Shannon, you so hard on him. I said, are y'all hitting up A.B. asking why he acting like this? Mm. Or y'all just ask, asking me? Y'all beating up the messenger. Yep. All I'm doing is delivering the messenger telling you what somebody has done. You mad at me, but not him. Okay. Bottom line, final takeaway from me, because I've been doing this for a long time, trust me on this. Next two, three years will pass. 
and nobody will want to talk to AB anymore. Right now, he's the, the most sought-after yeah. podcast or morning TV show <laughs> yeah, interview yeah. in America yeah. in sports, right? Yeah. Yeah. There's going to come a time when nobody will want to talk to him. Yeah, they will. And he's pushing that right now. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be very interesting, Skip, because yep. you know them bags, that bag, you know, the NFL money hit different, Skip. The NFL money hit different. The, that's the reason why you see guys playing a lot longer, because they're like, man, I don't know what I'm going to do out here in the real world making 10, 12, 15, 25 million dollars a year. Mm. Where am I going to get that kind of money at doing what? Good luck. I ain't messing that up. No mercy. Fox Bet Super 6 wants the nation to stack the cash again for the 49ers Rams NFC Championship game on Fox. Last week, the jackpot reached over $325,000, and they want to make it even higher this week. So scan the QR code, enter the NFC Championship Contest for your free chance to win, and invite your friends to play, too, because the more people who enter, the bigger the jackpot gets. So Joe Burrow has been on fire lately, averaging 390 yards in his last four games as the Bengals are now one win away from their first Super Bowl since the late 80s. Wow, amazing when you think of it that way. Shannon, we just saw Patrick Mahomes outduel Josh Allen mm-hmm. in a classic QB duel to get to this AFC title game. So, how close is Burrow to being in that elite class of QBs with Mahomes? Well, he ain't close to being the Mahomes class. I think he's a, a very good qu- Okay. You know, advertising mm-hmm. on me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they don't pay you a nickel. Everybody else does, right? You know, you know what I'm saying? I can't get no advertising free dollars off me. Yeah, right. Skip, Joe Burrow is fabulous. He's young. He's up and coming. I love what I'm seeing for this kid. The kids are better than I thought he would be, poised beyond his years. But he's not in my homeboy class. Skip, Mahomes is off to the best start of anybody in this in their career. First four years, Skip. This, he's, only, he's one win away from his a third Super Bowl in four years. He's an MVP, Super Bowl MVP. He's 50 and 13 in his career, 8 and 2 in playoffs, all before, all at the age of 26. You do realize Joe Burr is only a year younger than Patrick Mahomes. Mm-hmm. He has four conference championship games. That's the same number as Troy Aikman and Steve Young. That's more than Breeze and Marino. Here's something that, that you're going to really, gonna find really like, wow. Joe Burrow and Patrick Mahomes have the same number of regular season losses, 13. The difference is Patrick Mahomes has 50 wins. Joe Burrow has 12. One guy is 50 and 13. The other guy is 12 and 13. And you know what you said, Skip? Ooh, Patrick Mahomes is really turning the ball over. He's a turnover machine. Joe Burrow had more interceptions this season than Patrick Mahomes. Joe Burrow is He's, in that, he's there, but he ain't my homeboy. Mm. My homeboy is on a stage. Oh, he's by himself. Mm. He's right here by himself. The mm. throws that he can make, the arm mm. angles in which he can throw the ball, the platforms in which he can throw the ball from. Skip, did you know? I just, let me see, make sure I got this right, Skip. I mm. got to pull this up right quick. Because I'm going to, I'm going to. The Chiefs are three and one in playoffs with Patrick Mahomes when the end game win probability dips below 5%. He's three and one. That's since 2018. The rest of the NFL, one in 38. Mm. So when the when all when all hope is lost, oh my goodness, we done. Mm. Call it, call it, hey, call it. My homeboys, I got this. Mm. I got this. Joe Burrow. There's a lot of guys, Burrow and Herbert, but that guy, 15, mm. one five, is, is Kel's calling mm. with that red. Mm. He don't level by himself, Skip. Ain't nobody there with him. Ain't mm. nobody there with him. Joe Burrow is good. He ain't that. Mm. Yeah. Uh, the Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp sitting across from me picked the Kansas City Chiefs to win it all this year, but bailed on the bandwagon sometime like a third of the way into the season because yeah. you saw some struggle in their quarterback and what, their defense. Uh, their defense. That defense was, was, was got me, still got me concerned. Yeah, but the, the quarterback – was struggling. Mm-hmm. He, he was, I'm not going to say he was declining. He was just in a slump, mm-hmm. if, if we can go Dak Prescott. <laughs> he, he just wasn't right. right. He was starting to fall off a little bit because he was trying to do too many things. He was trying to be a living Harlem Globetrotter mm-hmm. of the National Football League. Too many behind the back, between the legs type passes. And it wasn't working. And I watched my team go up there with my defense and hold him to 19 points at home. And it should have been enough for us to win that game. And we scored nine. You know, good my quarterback had it 12 times and scored three field goals. Way to go. Dak Prescott going to beat Patrick Mahomes in what lifetime? 
Shannon Sharp, I'm here to tell you, you are missing the boat on Joe Burrow. No. We first saw it coming in his final year at LSU Mm -hmm. when he dominated college football in ways I've never seen any quarterback dominate college football. I agree. And that included Baker Mayfield at Oklahoma or Kyler Murray at Oklahoma. Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. It was the most extraordinary season, both statistically and eye-testingly, yeah. that, that I've ever seen. Yards, he, yards touchdowns, just, completion percentage, yeah, it, nothing was close. Did he have a track team of receivers? He did. Jamar he Chase, some, Justin Jefferson. He, he, they were pretty Clyde good. Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Yeah, he had them. Okay, we got it. But he did that. Yes. So I'm here to open your eyes to the fact that let's just take the last five games. I know it's a small sample size, and obviously he, he went number one overall to the team with the worst record. So right. he went to a bad situation. Mm-hmm that he has very quickly, after his knee injury, turned completely around right. to where they're a force and a threat. And I don't think they're going to go quietly. Oh, they're Arrowhead. not. It's going to be a high-scoring game. Yeah. Last five games, Joe Burrow has completed 75% of his passes, thrown for an average of 344 a game with 11 touchdowns to one interception. He led the NFL this year, completing 70% of his passes. hmm he led the NFL this year in yards per attempt. Oh, Eight, they throw it down 8. the field. 9, mm-hmm. 8.9. He also led the NFL in sacks, getting sacked. And he got sacked nine times at Tennessee. Mm-hmm. This is extraordinary. I've never seen this before I've in never, all my years. No. Nine times you went down, yet, wait a second, you still completed 28 of 37 for, wait a second, 348 yards? So clearly, he never got happy feet. Yeah, they don't rattle him. He never went in the tank. He, he never started to see ghosts. Mm-hmm. He kept fighting. He did. And throwing and making throws that won a game against a team that I did not think he could beat. Because I thought Tennessee at home with two games at yeah. home, I thought they were a lot. Yeah, but what happened? The guy that you had, no, you you never I liked Ryan never Tannehill, liked and it, it unfortunately it, for the Titans, he was it Ryan came Tannehill. down to one throw from Ryan Tannehill that got picked, and then if we could see the one throw that Burrow then made, mm-hmm. this is for the game, this is for the walk off field goal, and and here he goes and he finds guess who, Jamar and Chase, hits him right in the number and one. 22 man, like a trail there technique. There is this trail. I mean, that's what you that's do. I mean, Jack, you can, Skip. Jack Rabbit. Well, you got Skip. You don't let him inside. He yeah. doesn't let him inside. Yeah. The guy runs the cell yeah. right on you. Okay. There's nothing you can do about that. He got you, and Joe Burrow yeah. saw it, read it, yes. and executed it. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying he's got an Elway cannon, but he's got a Brady-esque kind of arm. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and he's starting. If anybody has some Brady going on right now, it's this kid. Because he's not the most athletic. He's not as athletic as uh, certainly Josh Allen or Patrick Mahomes, who's much more athletic than I give him credit for because he, he's such a big, like, stout kid. I but just, he, can, he can run. This is how we do it right now. Mm-hmm. We have a draft right now. You have a draft right now. All 32 quarterbacks. Who going first, Joe Burrow or Pat Mahomes? Well, am I picking? Yeah. Any general manager pick it. Oh, I know you're going to pick because you don't want to give my homeboy a credit because he done put foots in Brady. But skip that guy. Put foots in Brady? Put foots in Brady. Whoa, 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 wait a second. Mm-hmm. AFC Championship game at Arrowhead. They got, they got robbed. Oh, they got robbed. Then they got the ball back. You got to let them touch the ball. What happened to that? Tom Brady converted three straight third and ten. Should pass, hold on. Third you, in overtime. Hold on, time out. What? You in that committee that everybody needs to touch the ball in overtime. I ain't hear you say that. You just said that You just said that Monday that Josh Allen should have touched the ball. That was the same situation Patrick Mahomes I said in that case, but I still like the rule the way it is. But here's if, the, you, if you can't keep him from going 75 yards. But how, well, how, did, how did we even get to overtime? Hmm. Patrick Mahomes. He was had, great. Had to go, he, I told you that was the best game he played. Times 10 all year. I didn't see him play like that all year. Skip, the man won the MVP. The man was 50 touchdowns with 10 interceptions and 5,000 yards. You talking about that was the best game? The best game this year? Oh, you oh, you talking about Sunday? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, Skip, here's the thing. He had to learn. that Everybody plays him one way. They play shell cover two, mm. make you take your time, get down the field. Mm. And this was really the first time that he said, you know what? A turnover dooms us. A turnover gets us because it gives Buffalo an extra possession, hmm. and it gives, and, and we're not going to be able to make this up. Okay. So he understood that. Skip, I'm not saying J- Joe Burrow is legit. Hmm. That's what Skip. Remember, we talked about it Monday. This up and coming Burrow and, and and him and Herbert, all these young guys coming. Josh Allen, 
Lamar Jackson, Kyler Murray. The, but that's, that's, that's the king. That's okay. the big dog. Shannon Sharp, it was just about a month ago that Kansas City went to Cincinnati. Yes. And Joe Burrow went 30 of 39 yes. for 4 mm -hmm. 4 6. Yes. 4 46, four touchdowns, no picks. Fairly recently, your Ravens, and I know they were having some problems, and they finally fired Wink Martin. Yes. But they went to Cincinnati, and they watched him throw for 525 <laughs> and four touchdowns and no interceptions. Now back to my favorite website, your Bible, Pro Football Focus. Mm -hmm. For the whole year, this year, right. the whole 2021 season, mm -hmm. guess who graded out number one in the league? Number one, not Tom Brady. Joe Burrow. Yeah. They have him number one overall. They said Brady is far and away the MVP of the year over Aaron Rodgers. But w and, and so they gave Brady first team all pro. But second team all pro was Joe Burrow. Yeah. Best graded quarterback for the year was Joe Burrow. Joe would be special. Mm -hmm. He's special, Skip. He very, he's very special. So what I love about this kid, but and he's five. still a kid, I love his moxie. I love his savvy. I love his feel for the game. He's got a little bit of that that quirky sort of Brady genius yeah. for reading it, seeing it, and mm -hmm. getting rid of it. Right. I still don't get the sacks because that's not Brady-esque. No, obviously. but it's giving his offensive line. I, and, and that's yeah. why a lot of people thought they should get a pass protector, Panay Sewell, and put him as far as Jamar Chase. But it's like, nah, hey. we, need, we need people to score the ball. Hey, hey Joe. But, he, Skip, at some point in time, you can't allow your quarterback to get hit that many times. Well, Something bad. Skip, remember that's how he got hurt last year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, his first, his rookie year. See Too what many his coordinator said about him. He doesn't mind the physicality part of playing football, which is unique to Joe. It's what makes him pretty special okay. because you want to talk about physicality. It's not the way you live a long time in this league. Exactly. But, but exactly. Still. To be able to get knocked down nine times and keep getting up and beat Tennessee at Tennessee oh. is pretty special. He's, he, he's right? special. And that's why I'm saying your guy. Okay. Ain't There's it. something cocky about him. There's something brash about him. He's saying that, hey, I know Arrowhead's loud. You know Arrowhead's yes, loud. Yes, very. But he's saying, I played in the SEC, and those stadiums are at least as loud as Arrowhead. Yeah, you're he's, right. He's right about Alabama, that. Alabama, Georgia, you know? absolutely. Uh, okay. Yes. 80,000 screaming, 90,000, yes. But Skip, the one thing that he, he didn't have to go up against in, Arrow, in, in those stadiums is Pat Mahomes. Mm. My homeboy is legit. Mm. He it. Well, I watched Mahomes a lot in college, and I didn't really see this. I, was, I watched what, him one night against Baker Mayfield. and You saw him throw for 800 yards, yeah, though, right? and so did Baker. And Baker won the game. Nah, Joe Mixon ran for 200. The other guy ran for 200. But Pat Mahomes by himself. Mm. What, what guy from Texas Tech played in the NFL that mm. played with my homeboy? Mm. I know a lot of guys with Joe Burrow that played in it that's playing on Sunday. They got one that's going to win Rookie of the Year. Jamar Chase is going to win Rookie of the Year. Thanks you can make a, You can make a case that Justin Jefferson – could have won it last year. I just have a feeling right here, right now, I'll go on the record, that long-term Joe Burrow will wind up a little more special than Patrick Mahomes. Man, Skip, you crazy. Mm -mm. Now stop it. That's interesting. I'm starting it. Oh, no. I'm starting it. He's going to be more special than Patrick Mahomes. Mm -hmm. Let's let this play out and see where it goes, right? Yeah, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. You should be ashamed. You should be. Arrogance, but approachability I, at the same time, it kind of works no. for him. We're just, this is just the beginning no. for both these QBs, so good news for us. we got a lot to look yes. forward to. No mercy. February 6th, a storied venue that's seen everything, has never seen anything like this. NASCAR comes to the Los Angeles Coliseum for the very first Bush Light Clash at the Coliseum Sunday, February 6th, only on Fox. So the biggest item on the Lakers' agenda as the trade deadline approaches is if they'll keep Russell Westbrook. According to a report, even though Houston could be willing to trade John Wall for the former MVP, L.A. is reluctant to move the 33-year-old guard after giving away so much to acquire him. So, Shannon, are the Lakers making the right decision? <laughs> it was the only move. They talk about it, it, the optics of it. Ain't no optics. I tell you what, let's just say for the sake of argument, the Boston Celtics call them and say, you can have Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum for Russell, Russell Westbrook. Do you think they do that deal? They're not concerned about the optics. Let, the, let Portland say, okay, give us Russell, we'll give you C.J. McCollum. They're not concerned about the optics. This is the only thing they can do. 
There's one other deal that can be made for Russell Westbrook. It's John Wall plus a first-round pick. So, in other words, they said, we'll take him off your hand, yeah. but you need to give us something extra to take him off your hands. And the pick is in 2027. Yeah, because they got no picks until yeah. 2027. All right. So, this notion about optics and how it's going to look, considering it's the only thing they can do. Mm. Nobody else is willing to trade for Russell Westbrook and really give them a value. Now, if you want a bunch of role players, yeah, somebody take Russ off your hands. But if you're trying to get a caliber player of Russ in return, ain't nobody doing that deal. There's only two. De- there's only one deal that makes sense to everybody. But the but the uh, the rocket says you got to sweeten the deal. You got to sweeten it. Because think about this game. They've already had Russell. They know what Russ is. They had him in Houston two years ago. It's not like, well, I don't know what Russ is. You just had him. Mm. And how did they get? They traded Russ for Chris Paul. Chris? No, for John Wall. Mm-hmm. For John Wall. John Wall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's how they got him. Mm-hmm. And so, so Skip, the, oh, there, is no, there is no, well, the optics of it. And, you know, it, there is no optics in this. Mm. The fact of the matter is there's only one other deal that can be made. Mm. And the other team wants you to sweeten the pot in order for you to make the deal. Mm. So Russ is going to be there. And that's what we said, Skip. When you get something, it's okay, Skip, to buy a a $50 million car. But you better hope somebody else won't it. I used to tell guys, Skip, when I was in the league, guys used to get cars. The big thing was get cars and put MCM or put your name in the headrest. Yep. I said, well, you better find somebody else that's named SS to buy it. <laughs> or you better find somebody else that's number 27 to buy that car. Because yeah. you putting all that stuff in there, you better find somebody else. Or you get a big diamond pendant, yep. bone crusher, or heavy hitter. Well, you better find somebody else named heavy hitter, too, that won't that chain, or you just lost out. Mm. When you trade for a guy, Skip, you better find somebody else that's going to want him. Or guess what? Mm. You stuck like a song on repeat, yep. and it's not a good one. So, Shannon Sharp, I do agree with your premise. This is about optics. (laughs) The optics concern one LeBron James. This isn't about Rob Polinka or Jeannie Buss's optics. This isn't about we don't want to admit a mistake. We, we, We gave up too much for Russ to start with because they, I remind everybody, gave up Kuzma and Montrez and KCP. And a first yeah. from last year yeah. that became the 22nd overall pick. Right. It wound up in Indiana. But, but again, that's how much they had to give right. up to get Russ back to Correct. them. But this is simply and purely about LeBron not wanting to admit publicly to a mistake. Because it was LeBron who pushed for Russ. It's widely reported by everybody who covers that team. It was LeBron who derailed and vetoed the Buddy Heel deal, which was virtually done by Rob Polinka. Yeah. Am I right? Yes. Okay. So LeBron doesn't want that egg on his face to say, yeah, I screwed up Skip. with Russ and we had to eat it. Skip, hold on. You're talking about the optics, but what about the audio? Mm. Can we not hear that Russ, they're trying to trade Russ? What about the audio? So the mere fact that they're trying to trade a guy that they just got six months ago. What about... The optics of that. Okay. Remember what Phil Jackson used to talk about that Russ is often guilty of? They're called CFUs, Mm -hmm. as in compound F-ups, right? Yes. This is going to be the ultimate CFU if you don't get rid of Russell Westbrook. If you hang on to him just because of stubborn pride or the way it would look or the optics or whatever you want to describe it as— you're 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 just adding insult to injury because you now have an escape hatch by which you can get rid of Russ. Mm-mm. You it doesn't matter what you get back. Yes, it does. Because you're basically trading problem for problem. Except John Wall is way less of a problem than Russ. Yeah, has problem because he can't stay on the court. Okay, well that's a good thing because nah. this is classic addition by subtraction. Well, skip, we, we, skip, we're you, not that you, good. You have completely condemned Russell Westbrook. No, nah, he's playing better now. Playing better yep. now? Oh, now you're just speaking like LeBron. Playing better. Okay. Well, I told we, you he, from the start. We, we shocked his conscience. Oh, you did? Come sit by me okay. and watch them go play. Did my, my grandma said, boy, you don't know how to act? Mm. Well, sitting here with me and why, they, why your cousin and then your brother out there playing. Mm. Okay, you don't know how to play? You going to keep turning the ball over? You ain't going to play any defense? Sit right here and watch Austin Reeves. I, watch Stanley Johnson. Watch Malik Monk. Watch all those other guys. Mm. And... He's mm. sitting over there. I mean, the guy tripped out of bounds. Lips stuck out so far. Tripped over his lip. Mm. Lips out there growing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
That's what we do for that. I and saw, guess what he does since then? Mm, you see him? Okay. I saw five more turnovers. Yeah, we get you, we get your attention. We play a little better defense, though. Huh? Yeah. Oh, is he really? Yeah, play a little, little better, a little bit. A little, little bit better. I, I see little to no defense. I'm sorry. I, I see the same old Westbrook. Skip. We're not trading. We're not trading Russ for John Wall and giving up a first round pick. That's not happening. So stop trying to talk Genie Buzz, Rob Palenka, and whomever the decision I, I, makers I'm may be. To help you. I don't want no help. You got to get out from nope, under. We I keep promise it. you, if you cleared the decks nope. of Russell Westbrook, Mm-mm. all of a sudden you'd have a chance to go places. Go where? Go to the go top. To the blue back note? to the top of the Western Conference. You, you would be so much better with LeBron running the point, AD back at the five. They can pick and roll together. Get Russ out of there. Okay. He is liability. How, how about this? How about this? He has one big ability. It's called liability. How about this? We'll trade Russ. Uh, can we trade Russ to Orlando for Terrence Ross? Who else they got that can shoot the three? No, nobody's going to do this. They're not going to take it. Okay, it's, it's $44 million and 47 guaranteed next year. Okay, so, Only Houston would say, yeah, we'll do that. But, uh, uh, but here's the thing, Skip. Someone wants to buy my house. Okay, I'll sell you the house, but you also got to throw your yacht in. What, what, what the hell is that? Okay, but it's not a yacht. Yes, it is. 2027. I don't, Skip, we don't have any picks. It's an unbuilt yacht. Okay, let me it's ask you a like, question. LeBron is not going to be playing in 2027. We do know that. I feel very comfortable in saying LeBron James will be retired in 2027. I don't know that for a fact. I know that for a fact. Let's stop it. Man, they're going to be playing on 24 seasons. I don't know. Brady did it. But again, LeBron is not Brady. Three, four, five, six, seven. So, I mean, 25 seasons. Stop. Skip, they play a different position. Stop. Okay. But all I'm saying is, Skip, it's not going to be easy to get up off him next year. You let make it seem like, oh, it's because it's end of season and nobody wants to do anything. Hell, he got $47 million. This offseason is going to be hard to move him. You stop. You got a way out. We ain't got no you, way you out. You found a sucker. The Rockets suckers here. Yeah, take him back. Thank you. John Wall is a clutch client. Okay. Rich Paul, LeBron James, clutch client. You can maneuver this. You can navigate through no. it. Get out from under it. You can improve your team by getting rid of uh, Russell. Okay, Westbrook. give us D'Angelo Russell. We'll trade okay, D'Angelo Russell. Nobody's going to do any of that. Nobody will. Well, then why, well, then this why? is craziness. Russell Westbrook, everybody sees he's just a mess. Like, nobody wants a part of that. It's widely reported nobody is interested in Russell exactly. Westbrook. He's a slam dunk first ballot Hall of Famer that nobody wants. Well, Skip. Except LeBron. Only one team wanted him this offseason. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> one, it was team. one team. And they found the one, one team. Player. They found the one team. One man. One phony that was Rob. That Rob, Rob did that deal. No, he didn't. Did you he, know and I know Rob it was LeBron. No, nope, he wanted Buddy Heald. It was done. Rob. And I first guessed this. LeBron wanted Russell Westbrook because he could go two ways here, north or south. If it goes north, then he could say, look what I did with Russell Westbrook. Everybody else failed with him. Look who failed with him. KD failed with him. James failed with him. Bradley Beal. George, Bradley Beal. Yeah. Kawhi didn't want him. Nobody wanted him. I took him under my wing, and I got the best out of Russ, and we won a ring together. That's, That's number one. That's going north. Going south. If it goes south, which he knew deep down it would, then he, didn't he, know that. he would have the ultimate scapegoat. The quote-unquote goat would have a scapegoat because Russ is the easiest target in sports. We do blooper reels of Russ. Ain't no we, okay, you. Ain't okay, no I we. do blooper reels exactly. of Russ's <laughs> turnovers no and missed shots on a daily basis yeah. on this show. Don't do and, it. And we have put comedy music behind it. <laughs> we, we have put circus music behind it because... It's outrageously, <laughs> egregiously wrong. Am I right? Yes. Okay, so you watch it and you say, what are you doing? You have gone completely over the edge. You have the worst hands of any he quote does? Unquote, point guard I have ever seen. Right. Okay, you make the worst decisions. You're the worst shooter. You're at the bottom of the barrel as a three-point shooter right. and a free-throw right. shooter. Okay, it's lie ability. That's the only ability. Well, let's, let's just hope AD can stay healthy. LeBron continue his surge, what he's been doing, and Russ we min- and Russ minimize his shot selections, and he does a better job of taking I care mean, of the you're, basketball. You're telling me he's just got to stay out of the way. That's what you okay. say, okay. right? Just yeah. stay out of the way. Yes. Just just kind of go over in the corner and just just kind of stay over there. Yeah. Right. Okay. It'll be okay. Yeah. That's no, what he you got, want. He got to stay out of there, but you know we want to minimize his involvement. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it's good. You know how to sign, like, okay, in high school, you had a team, you get on the project, and it's everybody, everybody wasn't going to get the A student. You weren't going to be in always in the A and B and get those. You had to get somebody you already know. You saw their grades, they're not doing much. So you minimize their involvement. Okay, <laughs> you go. You go get the cardboard, you yeah. buy the glue, right. or you get, that's your involvement. Yeah. That's your part participation I in the project. I got and it. when we put this thing together, you'll get a good grade also. Oh, but always knowing that <laughs> you were very, yeah, yeah. That, that you weren't heavily involved in okay. this. Okay, but the ultimate minimizing would be in Houston. No. Send him back. No, no, yep. no, no, Skip. See, you always try to, I know what you're trying to do. I'm you, not trying to do it. I'm trying to help you. No, I don't want your help. I don't want your help because anytime you offer help, I already know. Mm. Mm-mm. I, I ain't drinking. still thinking you're about sunk. the participation award. You're in the group, but you're not really participating, yeah. but you like are on the team. Mm-hmm. So you get the, okay, Shannon, it kind of makes sense. Mm-hmm. I don't know how uh, he would feel do. about that comparison. No mercy. <laughs> Well, as many of us expected, Big Ben is retiring from the NFL. The two-time Super Bowl champ made the announcement on social media with his official account posting a video message from the QB where he says, quote, I retire from football, a truly grateful man. Shannon, Ben played his entire 18-year career with the Steelers. So how will you remember Ben Roethlisberger? Well, Skip, on the field is... He's a borderline top 10. I don't know if I would necessarily put him in the top 10, but he had won two Super Bowls through the game-winning touchdown in his last Super Bowl win. Fifth in passing yards, 64,000. Eighth in passing touchdowns, 418. Uh, 11 season with at least 10 wins, Skip. Never had a losing season. 165 wins. He has more wins. He has double the amount of wins as losses. And uh, only six quarterbacks that started 100 games have a better record. Brady, Staubach, Montana, Manning, Rodgers, and Bradshaw. Mm. And he put his body on the line. He took a lot of punishment. He's the most sacked quarterback, if I'm not mistaken, in NFL history. And that's what he was known for. Because it wasn't just good enough to get there. You had to get him down. Because if you didn't get him onto the ground and you was around his waist or you just had one arm, he was going to throw the ball. He was going to make a play. So he, he, he put his body. He stood on that hill for the Pittsburgh Steelers. But there's a part of him that's off the field that I think people are going to judge him by also. Yep. And the Hall of Fame voters are going to look very, very hard. I think Ben Roethlisberger, for what he did on the field, yep. deserves to be in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I do, too. But it's very complex yep. when you look at his on the field and off the field. And now that they say voters can take off the field into the equation, because before the T.O. situation, Skip, nothing could be brought in except field of play. Mm-hmm. Nothing that someone did off the field because we know there are a lot of guys that had some stuff off the field that did not weigh into them going into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So it's a very complex situation. But on the field, Skip, he was he was special. He was special. There's no way around that. I'll start with the off the field. Must be taken into account. I know in my many years at ESPN, I, I can't tell how many of the black commentators came to me and, and to, to raise the issue of, are, are we giving him a pass that he doesn't deserve for mm-hmm. these incidents? And I don't want to go into the gory details, right. but we all know what they were. Right. <clears throat> yeah, we're giving him a pass right. that he does not deserve. Mm-hmm. He did get suspended. Right. Six games later, reduced yep. to four. Yep. So let's frame it with that. But then... As he retires, let's go back onto the field. So how will I then remember him just as a football fan or Mm -hmm. fanatic? He was simply the country's strongest quarterback (laughs) I ever watched. Ever watched. Right. Because in his heyday, he would shrug off the biggest, baddest pass rushers (laughs) like they were little kids. Yep. Just shrug them off. I don't know how he did it. Just shrug them off and just stand tall on that mountain, Mm -hmm. like you said. And yet he was a big man. With, with a pretty average arm. Yeah. And the other thing was, he was actually Brett Favre in a very different package because you want to talk about gambling? Oh, he, yeah. he would try anything yeah. at any point. And he twice led this league in interceptions. Right. So it was sort of Eli-esque. But I never <coughs> thought of Eli as a gambler. No. Ben was just a flat out, yeah, I'll try that. Right. I'll try that. Mm-hmm. I'll try that. And, and his receivers loved it. Antonio loved it for, for much of the time. Yeah, but for... then sometimes he wouldn't get the targets that he, and then he, Flipped he out, didn't love it. it down. Yeah. So, to your point, you, you win two Super Bowls out of three. That, that's pretty great. Right. You make six Pro Bowls. That's that's pretty great. Right. These are Hall of Fame type credentials, and 
yet when when I think of him, I, I even flash back when if you just throw the name Ben Roethlisberger at me, I flash back to the motorcycle crash and I just I, I just can't like make peace with it because you had it all, man. And that might have took a year off his career. I, I, I've always said that it took at least one because he's riding. I think he's going to the facilities. I right. recall on his way to the mm-hmm. facility on a motorcycle with no helmet. Right. And winds up going over the hood of a car. Up the windshield. A, did, I don't know if he went through it. He didn't it, it, but he, he hit, hit, the, yeah. hit the windshield mm-hmm. with no helmet on. And he was he, he was a wreck, right. man, because right. it took a while to come back from that. I just heard an article, Skip, oh, just read it this morning, yeah. that Mike Singletary said the 49ers had a deal in place. to tra- They had it. Trent Balky and Jed York had sh- signed off on it. And he said no because that was the, when the allegation had first appeared. Uh-huh. Okay. So... Obviously, the Steelers thought it was very serious because they was willing to move on from a guy that potentially had already won a Super Bowl and was on the cusp of becoming a great quarterback. Yeah. So they obviously they took this very serious. Obviously, we know they stuck with him. But Skip, like I said, on the field, Skip, his body of work yep. is impeccable. And to his credit, off the field, and again, I'm not close to the situation, but he did get married. He get did married, have got kids, three, and, three, and, yeah. and it, it seemed like he became a. Pretty good husband right. and a pretty good dad. Because yes. it seemed like that became his priority. Yes. And he probably lasted about as long as he could last because he's sort of the flip side of Brady. I don't think he was ever the biggest workout warrior. No. Right? No. I just, I, I thought, Skip, he stayed a year too long. I told you, I said, Skip, yep. I'm seeing decline. I said, Skip, if you look at him closely, Skip, it just got harder and harder for him to push the ball down the field. I, I think his shoulder got so beat up that he lost whatever arm strength he right. did have, which was not high to right. begin with. Yeah, Skip, it's like if, <laughs> uh, uh, Greg Maddox. Greg Maddox didn't have anything to lose on his fastball, no. Skip. If he, goes from, if he goes from 85 to 65, well, I'll be – and so that's what Ben, like you said, for a man his size, he's as big as Josh Allen. Yeah, oh, definitely. But his yeah. arm is not even close to not, Allen's. Not even, it's half of Josh <laughs> yes. Allen's. So you would think somebody that size 6'5", 250, you're like, oh, man, this dude can throw the ball 80 yards. Throw it through a hurricane. Mm-mm. But would he compete? Oh, he yeah. absolutely would compete. Ooh. Oh, he would die. He, like you said, you know what, Skip? He was a bigger Brett Favre mm-hmm. because he would dive. He would do anything for the win. He, he would. would take risks, sometimes unnecessarily. Mm-hmm. He definitely put his body on the line like a la, like a Brett Favre did. Uh, but, Skip, you look at those numbers and, you, I mean, how do we, Phillip Rivers, Eli, I mean, Ben has the two. Eli has the two with yep. the MVPs. Phillip Rivers had the, I mean, that was a great QB class, Skip. Yep. And to the bitter end, just on feel for the game, because he had a great feel for playing the position. Right. They they made the playoffs yeah. this year. So you got to give him one last to rock. Yes. They got there. If I'm being Skip, I, I, I'm not announcing my time. I'm not going into the hall with Brady. Mm. If anybody, I ain't even thinking about it. Who, who want to go in there with that, with him? I guess he didn't have a choice. I, no, I'm saying, you know what? I'm going to make my official announcement in 2023. I know, but Father <laughs> Time was knocking on that door hard. I ain't got enough no time, and I'm just not playing. And okay. then I'll officially announce it next year. Just so you can have the stage yeah, to not, yourself? Not no stage myself. You still get the stage with, with Brady. That's what I mean. I, I got it. Brady got You got to put Brady in by himself. Brady yeah. got to be a standalone. Might be the first time nobody else, only one player goes into that the hall. That would work. I would agree. <laughs> Well, in the end, I would like to congratulate Ben. Oh yeah, he had on a phenomenal a great career. Great on the field yeah. career. I mean, 18 yeah. years with one organization. Yep. There are not very many players. I don't know. Maybe I mean, who, we'll see how it plays out. But 18 years in one organization, kind of like even Brady had what 21, but he he moved on. Peyton had you know 12, he, 13. He had to move on. I, I mean, I like when guys can stay at one organization, but that's mm-hmm. just not the way it is in football, Skip. Mm. It's not the it's not the way it is in sports anymore. So I hear you. But he had an unbelievable End career. Congratulations, Ben. Absolutely. Congrats. And hope he enjoys this next stage of life as dad. And I thought the video was telling with all of his kids and wife and Boy, end of an era for Pittsburgh fans, guys. We're going to move on for now. No mercy. Sunday, the NFC Championship presented by Intuit TurboTax Live is on Fox with a clash between division rivals as Jimmy Garoppolo and the 49ers take on Matthew Stafford and the Rams for a trip to Super Bowl 56. It all kicks off at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific, only on Fox and the Fox Sports app. With his OC moving on to Denver, Aaron Rodgers is left to ponder if he should stay or go after an early playoff exit. Aaron's former teammate, Brett Favre, went on 
The record to say his gut feeling is that the reigning MVP leaves Green Bay for another opportunity. Huh, Shannon, how much stock do you put in this? I'm not putting much in it, Skip, because <clears throat> um, having Brett say this, I don't think he and Aaron Rodgers are buddy-buddy. Mm. And so for me, I think he's speculating like the rest of us are that Brett's go- that uh, Aaron is going to leave. So I don't think he has any inside information. Um, Rodgers has given us plenty clues this year that he's been unhappy for an extended period of time in Green Bay, that some of the things that haven't, you know, they hadn't heard his, his pleas for how he thinks, you know, some of the additions or subtractions from the team, and they didn't take that into account. Um, but for me, Aaron could have put this to bed a long time ago, Skip. I'm staying. Boom, done. He hadn't done that. Mm-mm. Is there anything, Skip, he's just added more fuel and more logs to the fire yep. of the speculation mm-hmm. that he's leaving. Yep. And maybe maybe you're right. Maybe it's because, bam, gagged again. Yep. The second time in a row had the number one seed with 13 and three. Of, with 13, we had 13 victories. And this time I didn't even get, I didn't even get to the, you know, at least the previous two years, Skip, I got to the championship game, lost to San Francisco, lost to Tampa in my building. This time, I ain't even get an opportunity to get to the championship game. I lost in the divisional round. Mm. But for me, Skip, I'm not putting a whole lot of stock into uh, to what Brett's saying because, hell, you, I've been speculating that he was, he was going to leave for the longest time, and I definitely don't have any, any inside information. Mm. But I just think the tea leaves and the way it's, like, like, the way it's trending, I think the, the, the greater chance is that he leaves as opposed to him staying. Okay. And hell, hell, we are, everybody could be wrong, and he ends up returning, or he ends up retiring, which would be a shock to me. I read the tea leaves between Aaron and Brett as they have gone from frenemies when they right. were rivals as uh, Green Bay Packers, uh-huh. where Aaron had to spend three long years behind Brett and go through the annual offseason of Willie or won't he? Right, right. And now they've gone besties because they've become sort of partners in crime because Aaron finally realized, well, there's only one human out there who gets what I'm going through, and it's that guy because right. he went through it before me. Right. And somehow that brought them back together. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm, again, I'm not close to this situation. I'm reading it from a distance. But it felt like last year that Brett Favre became Aaron's mouthpiece, mm-hmm. that a lot of what Aaron wanted out there – right. It came through Brett because Aaron knows when Brett speaks, people will listen. Especially in Packer Nation. Right? Mm -hmm. And so he's now saying my gut feeling, and I believe it's what Aaron wants out there as your gut feeling, is that Aaron wants to replant the seeds of threat, of departure. Because what's the quickest way to turn the the narrative from I gagged to Please don't go. Right. Well, it, it's just to plant seeds to threaten. I might be going. Yeah, I might be going. <laughs> and when Brett says, my gut feeling is he's gone, Packer Nation says, oh, my God, right. please don't leave. Right. And they fall back down at Aaron's feet. Please don't leave us behind. And even if a lot of times, Skip, even if you think that as a uh, icon at a particular team, an organization, city, even if you think that, you're like, no, nah, I think he's going to stay. You don't want to put that out there. Um, but... Skip, it, it, but this is a very situation, a very different situation. The problem was with Brett, Brett was tiring, retiring and unretiring every single year. Brett didn't want to come to the mini camp. Brett didn't want to come to the OTAs. Mm-hmm. Brett really didn't want to do anything. He didn't even want to come to a training camp. Brett just wanted to show up, play, and boom, I'm going back. I'm getting on the jet, going back to Mississippi. Yep. Get on the tractor and do what I do. Yep. And the Packers got tired of him holding them hostage mm-hmm. because it, uh, do we go get do we go get a quarterback skip? I mean, what do we do? Mm. Aaron, you ready? Brett, I'm not coming. I, I see I, I I am. And finally, he backed them in a corner so many times, yep. they came out and said, okay, we're good. Aaron Rodgers the quarterback. And then when he tried to come back, they said, no, nah, no, nah, you're not doing that. Well, let me fight for the job. Nope. Ain't no fighting for no job. Ain't no putting the job up on the line. We're not doing that. And so they ended up moving on. I just don't understand how it got this bad so quickly. For Green Bay and Aaron Rodgers. Skip, are you upset about Alex Van Pelt? That bother you that much? Jeff Janis bother you that much? Some of the guys that they chose to move on from, that bother you? You were that close of friends to them? Skip, you know, you, you, you've you been in the business. I don't know how close you were to everybody that worked at a, a newspaper or the columnists or the, the uh, you know, the, uh, the guys that went to Daily. I don't know how close you were, but people leave. 
teams turn over. Mm. Nobody brings the exact same team. Coaches leave, yada, yada, yada. It happens. Mm. But it just got to the point just like he seemed like he despised being in okay. Green Bay. He despised well, a lot. He did, but they made amends. They they served their penance. I think him. they thought they made amends. Okay, I'm not but, so but sure. They, he they gave him everything he could have wanted. They had home field throughout the playoffs. Yes. That all he had to do is win two games on the frozen tundra to get to another yes. Super Bowl, your first in 11 years. Right. Everybody was relatively healthy. Right. You wanted Randall Cobb, you got him back. Mm -hmm. And ill-fatedly, his last pass in that game went toward Randall Cobb. You know, mm -hmm. like, uh, no, the deep one was deep the next the, one. Yeah, that was Devontae. The second to last. Mm -hmm. So the point was that now he... To, to me, I'm going to stand by this. I said it last year, and I was right. Aaron does not want to leave. He wants to stay, but he wants to stay under his conditions what while hell? sweetening the pot. He, he wants them to fall back down at his feet and say, what can we do for you now? And I agreed with the Florio premise. It, if you really want to keep him, you should just redo the con You know, just tear it up and well, start over. Good, well, they could have done that last year. And they didn't. And he still stayed because I believe he wants to retire as a Packer. So when you and I also believe he doesn't want to go 44-year-old Tom Brady. He doesn't want that. Well, that's good. That's I think a long time away. That's at two years more. Right. He'll he'll play next year. He'll turn 39 right. in December. Right. 39. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm going to say next year and one more. That's it. No. And I don't believe he wants the pressure of saying, I'm going to Denver to become the savior. Well, because Bronco Nation would go crazy over Aaron Rodgers and say, now we got it, got right? It. Yep. And I don't think he wants to have that heaped on his shoulders like Peyton didn't mind at all because Peyton got pushed out the back door. Right, and he, right. he didn't want to leave. Yeah, he didn't want to leave. They, they, drove okay. him, they drove him off. They drove him away. Yeah, okay. But hold, let me ask you a question. Did Tampa Bay fans not go crazy when they got Tom Brady? Sure. They went bonkers. Well, they were shocked by it because they didn't see it coming. Uh, you don't think Bronco Country will be shocked if we get Aaron Rodgers? Okay, but Tom Brady was not at all threatened by having to be the savior of Tampa Bay because yes, it, it was a 7-9 and nine team known as the Suckineers that had the worst winning percentage over history in sports. But here's the thing. It's just the same thing. Look at the Broncos. Yeah, but that's no a, winning record. Eleven starting quarterbacks since Peyton Manning. And so, what do you what do you think? What do you think Bronco Country is going to think? What do you think those guys, Cortland Sutton and Patrick and Noah Fant, all Judy, all those guys, like, man, we got him. Mm. We got. There's a big difference between having a quarterback and expecting to win, and having a quarterback and you're hoping to win. That guy gives you expectations, not hope. Okay, that guy gives you hopelessness in no, the no, postseason no, 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 no. because he is the most overrated, overhyped postseason quarterback ever, and it's not even close. Okay, Skip, I would four regular season about, MVPs. Four, and he's seven and nine in the playoffs since the Super Bowl. I'm not even fighting you on that. Okay. I'm not debating you on his postseason success. But his regular season success, there are not very many quarterbacks that can touch that resume. No, there are not. So let, and there's let, no quarterback who can untouch it the way he has in the postseason. Well, no, can, no quarterback can, ever. Can, can Bronco Country, can we have a, a day of excitement, something so, positive to build on? So you want to go 12-5 and five and make the playoffs and lose at home, right? Hey, that don't, that don't, hey there's something about my high. Mm. We don't be losing no playoff games like that in the high. Mm. You know that. Mile low under Aaron <laughs> Rodgers. Or <laughs> as they call him on Twitter on Saturday night, Aaron Frodgers, because that's what he is. There you go. So now you Frodgers. like that. Frodgers. Huh? Oh. I wish I'd thought of it, but I've been calling him basically that for the last 12 years on television. Mm. I called it from the first. And we, you came around to my side of the table. Well, we go get it. We go get you. And now you want him. We go, we go get a nice little nickname for old Dinkin and Dakin. Yeah. Yep. Dinkin and that you, you want to talk about the ultimate dink master? It's Aaron Freakin. Don't Rogers. do that, Skip. He's a dink master. The, the, the other night, it's just dink. It's, it's like I'll flip it to seventeen. I'll flip it over here. I'll flip it over what, there. So you want to hold? You want to? I, I know you're not talking about because with, with the exception of that long pass to uh, 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 Evans, what was your guy doing? Leonard Fournette had like a hundred catches. He led the league in air distance for the second year. No, in a air row. doesn't mean the completions. Okay, well, you you're just talking about Dinkin and Duncan. He's the opposite yeah, of Dinkin. Yeah, he throwing the ball away. You see what happened. They should have run the ball, but no, they wanted Tom Brady. You see what they did on the first drive? They ran the ball. Leonard Fournette getting ten yards, getting five yards. Jim, everybody doing well, but okay. no, let's put the ball in you know who hands, and it mm. cost them. Okay, we're gonna have happiness. Okay, well, you Bronco just took country, a get ready. calculated but high risk because you hired a coordinator 
who wasn't even calling plays for the Green Bay Packers, Nathaniel Hackett, son of Paul Hackett, who was a pretty good head coach, mostly in college football. Stefanski got a job and didn't call plays. Matt Nagy once got a job and didn't call plays. There are a lot of guys. Well, the only reason Nathaniel got a job and didn't call plays. Nathaniel got this job because... Aaron blessed him in Green Bay. Aaron loves him. Aaron right. thinks he commands the room. Now bless us with your presence okay. in Denver, Aaron. Well, that's what he's. they're hoping for, is that Aaron would be more open to coming to Denver. Oh, you got my man Hack, yeah. right? That's right. Okay. Here we go. Oh, division title. Here we come. Really? Head to head with Wait, my homeboy. You just told me my homeboy is the greatest quarterback in the history of football, right? Oh, he, so he, you, he, now you got to overcome my homeboy, and you love Justin, Justin Herbert. I do. And I respect. Derek Carr, and you're going to overcome him with the Skip. with Aaron Rodgers. Really, here's the thing, my homeboy. Interesting, is a lion. Mm. That there's leopards, there are you know cheetahs, yeah. there's hyenas, there's jackals. All those are very dangerous. Yeah, the lion gets to throw to the yeah, greatest cheetah ever. But that lion, which is my homeboy, yeah. he take precedent. Mm. My homeboy is going to take precedent. Okay. Now, Rodgers is going to have to go head to head, going to have to beat him. You have to be at some point in time. You make the Super Bowl, mm. you'd have to play. So. Might as well go on and get some two two times and get it out the way. Hmm. Okay. Have at it. I just hope we play the Cowboys. Mm-hmm. That's what I hope. You yep. always hope you play the Cowboys. Because we own the Cowboys. Huh? Aaron, Rodgers own, Aaron Rodgers and the Broncos own the Cowboys. Well, we got Dan Quinn back, and we're going to talk about oh, that in just a minute. Oh, you want to talk about it? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your jeans are giving it away, Skip. The- no mercy. Quinn lost out on the Bears head coaching job as Chicago went with Colts DC Matt Eberflus instead. And now, according to a report, Quinn is telling teams that he's decided to stay with Dallas and pursue a Super Bowl as their defensive coordinator. So, Shannon, what do you think all of this means now? Nothing. He's going back. I think the thing is, Skip, you want the Bears job. You got a young quarterback. They, because if you don't have a quarterback, Skip, I mean, come on, really? I mean, yeah, I, I don't care who you are. If you don't have the quarterback, you're not gonna do. You're not gonna have success. Mm. And he's looking at the other jobs that's available. Skip, he's like, can I really have success? And you already had an opportunity. Atlanta was a prime situation. You had Matt Ryan. You get an opportunity. You go to the Bears. You got a young uh, uh, Justin Fields. Mm-hmm. And I think he's looking at the landscape. Okay, organizationally, quarterback wise, can I really win? Can I really have success there? I think it was great for him. And guess what? If they have a type season that they have last year, coaching somebody going to 32 jobs, somebody getting fired next year too. And you'll be right back in the mix. But I'm just trying to figure out how the hell you lose in the first round and y'all hot candidate. They DQ a hot candidate. The coordinator, uh, offensive coordinator, Kellen Moore, a hot candidate. They put some, put some dubs together. Mm. Some playoff dubs. Mm. That's what I need to see. Mm. What did Dan Quinn do for your hometown Atlanta Falcons? So to the Super Bowl. He was pretty good, yeah, right? Yeah. He had a pretty good run. He did. Until 28-3 to happened, and then it didn't happen. And he got goaded in the fourth quarter in overtime, and Brady threw for 240 yards. And but Matt Ryan should have overtime. touched the ball. Remember overtime rules? You got to touch the ball. Was that Dan Quinn's fault? Maybe in the end. Yeah, it was. He's the CEO. He, he's got to preside run over. Run the football. A guy who's now in charge in San Francisco and is going to play the NFC Championship game out here at SoFi yep. against the division rival Rams. That's Kyle Shanahan, right? Yep. I have high regard for Dan Quinn. I'm happy that he came back. I bet you are. Because, to quote my current head coach, Mike McCarthy, I have never seen one side of the ball flip through an offseason the way we flipped our defense. Mm-hmm. It had a lot to do with a player you saw coming before I did, and that was one 11 from heaven, as in Micah Parsons, who took this league by storm and did at least look like a semblance, a reflection of one Lawrence Taylor once upon a time. But at least Lawrence is a rookie. I saw some flashes where I said, aha, Mm -hmm. I see that. He changed the way my team played defense, and you can't tell me that Dan Quinn didn't think, speaking of do I have a quarterback, on defense, he's got a Micah. Yeah, but here's the thing, though, Skip. Remember last team that said, oh, we're going to be better next year than this year? Mm-hmm. That was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yep. You also, hey, I get it. Michael Parsons is from, you know, a godsend, but you have to guard against a lot. You're probably going to lose a few guys in free agency. Probably you, Randy Gregory. Injuries, I agree you. you never yep. know. Mm-hmm. So don't just think, oh, we're right here, and we're going to get even better next year. That's not necessarily true because sometimes – uh, we saw Levante David say, you know, they had, we had some little turmoil going on. We had some things yep. going on, Skip, that never came out 
but we had some problems that we didn't have in, in the past. Okay, but it's not like Dallas just won the Super Bowl. They lost in the first round at home. But everybody's talking about their defense. And guess what? And everybody's thinking they're the reason why the defense flipped. I'm sure Michael Parsons said, I had a lot to do with that. Randy Gregg said, I had a lot to do with it. Trayvon Dix, I had 11 interceptions. Mostly. Mm-hmm. So you get a lot of guys, when you start to win, you get a lot of guys saying, I'm the reason why we're winning. Okay, now for the bottom line, God's truth to what just happened to me, I believe that Dan Quinn said no to Chicago and no to Denver, like I'm opting out. I think at the last second. No, we he, said no to him. Okay, I don't think so. I think so. I think he backed out because he started to smell the possibility that he could be the next head coach in Dallas sooner than later. Well, hold on. When it came down to the final two guys, it was him and Hackett. He didn't pull his name out the hat. Mm. He could have easily pulled his name and said, no, I'm good. Maybe he didn't try that hard. Uh, yeah, that no, exactly. He wanted to get that job. Mm. But Nathan, uh, Nathaniel, mm-hmm. we call him Nate. Yeah. Nate Hackett. <laughs> Nate Hackett. He's actually Nathaniel, but go yeah. ahead. He got that job. Yep. He got that job. Because I think Dan Quinn would prefer to have the Dallas job over the Denver mm-hmm. job. Which is the better job right now? Well, let's do quarterback. I can't tell. Let's, oh, well, let's, let's, do, let's do quarterback. Guy. Do what? Okay, let's what's do your, Micah. What's your quarterback get? Hmm. Your quarterback got bounced in the first round. With all that talent. Mm-hmm. Two Hall of Fame linemen. Pro Bowl receivers. Hmm. And got bounced better in the team first on round. Paper right here, right now. Dallas or Denver? It's Dallas by far. Okay. You don't play on paper. What do we okay. play? You want me to make a football so we can play on paper like maybe, we used to do in, ski, in kids? Maybe, and this is possibly wishful thinking on my part. Maybe I'm, again, speaking hard overhead. Maybe Dan Quinn got a little suggestion from Jerry Jones, just a little whisper in the ear of, you're next. You got no, next. Maybe Jerry Jones said, hey, I got a couple extra million for you. Come on, man. Uh, well, that, that was a, a <laughs> definite. Because yeah, there, there's I, no, got, no I cap. got a couple extra dollars for you. There's no cap. Yeah. Although Jerry's been pretty stingy with those dollars when it comes to a To players? No, to coordinators. Yeah. So trust me, in the past, going back to North Turner, stingy. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's like, look, look, look what you're working with. Okay. All right. Yeah, stop being cheap. Okay. So do I think that Dan Quinn would be a 10 times better head coach than Mike McCarthy? You better believe I do. <laughs> so you out on Mike McCarthy. I, I, huh? Am I out? I've been telling you all along. <laughs> nah, nah, you talk about fraudulent. <laughs> oh, I got exposed, a main man. No, you, well, I you, told you that because he had a Super Bowl <laughs> ring. I got blinded by the bling. He still got it. Blinded by the bling. It, he just, it just shocked me. It hit me right between the eyes. And then lately I've started to look at the last three years in Green Bay. Bad to worse uh-huh. to worse. You told you me he had a ring. He uh, still got it. It's yeah. like when people say, well, Shannon, I didn't know you have kids. Yeah, mm. I still got them. Mm. Yeah, he still got that Super Bowl ring. I made man, you up here being, Jenny, you remember? He being there, yeah, my cowboy got a made man. Okay. He made Aaron okay. Rodgers. And what did I think? Because I used to hear back in the day when he was the coordinator for Favre and the head coach, yes. obviously. He called plays, and a lot of people thought he was the best play caller in pro yes. football during those years. Late five years, early Rodgers years. Best play call in football. And then I find out after I do Made Man <laughs> that, wait, wait a second, he's not going to call plays? But at first he said he was going to call plays. Well, that's and right. I think Jerry well, when I be- did Made Man, I thought he was calling plays. <laughs> did Jerry, I think Jerry, be, because remember Kellen Moore at the time, Skip, he was about to take the job at Boise State. Okay. And the next thing you know, Jerry's like, nah, we want you to stay here, yada, yada, yada. You're going to be able to call plays. And the next thing I know, I'm like, hold on. You call plays. Can you see a scenario where Kyle Shanahan is the head coach and not call it plays? No. Or Sean McVay is the head coach and no. not call it plays? Absolutely not. That's a forte. That's yeah. what you do. Nathaniel Hackett will call plays. Right. Okay? So he doesn't do anything because right. we know he can't motivate. He got right. exposed in hard right. knocks, right? Right. Unless it's monkey butt powder right. after they lost to your Bronco, right? Right. So in the end, on the sideline, he, he looks like an innocent bystander, or maybe not so innocent. Well, he looks you, like a spectator. And see, that's what you got to do, Skip. You got to make him participate in the class project. Okay. You see, if you just let him stand and let every, let the coordinators do their thing and the offense flying around, the defense flying around, the special teams, we got to make him make some decisions, be it challenges, be it timeouts, mm-hmm. be it situations. I want Mike McCarthy to participate because I know if I can get him to participate, <laughs> increase my chances of winning. Time mismanagement, Yeah. Right? What do we see at New Orleans on that? Was it a Thursday night game? Yep. Remember Mike McCarthy had to stay back with COVID? Yes. And Dan Quinn Dan went Quinn down did. on the yeah. sideline. And I'll be the first to admit, I don't think Jerry Jones loves the fact that he goes cap on backwards right. as the head coach. 
But that's how he, that's man, his look style. Here. If Jerry, that man won a championship, if that man can win this championship, Jerry Jones don't care if he put that hoodie on backwards, his yep. pants on backwards. Yep. Get me to a championship. I'm sure Mr. Kraft don't like Coach Belichick cutting, cutting yep. those hoodies up and have them all. Did Dan Quinn bring new energy to the sidelines? Yes, yes. Butt slapping, yes. back slapping, <laughs> hugging. Yeah. Kissing. He I mean, doing everything. One guy He's looks intense. Crazy. One guy looks intense. Yeah. Brings energy and emotion. Yeah. Seems to be a great motivational guy. Yeah. The other guy just looks like. Yeah. And one guy should have won a Super Bowl, and the other guy somehow did win a Super Bowl. It, 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 well, I, I don't know. Well, better Rogers. than he's saying, right? Better than nothing, Skip? At least that's the thing. No mercy. In an Instagram story this week, Baker Mayfield said that he, quote, will be getting off all social media for the foreseeable future. His up and down play reflected in the uneven season the Browns had as a whole as they missed the playoffs. And now the QB is recovering from a shoulder surgery as he looks to earn a new contract next year. So, Shannon, what does this tell you? Well, clearly he saw that social media was affecting him and the way he played. He responds to everything. He hears everything. He would respond to Kat, uh, uh, Colin. He would respond to Mary Kay Cabot talking about, you know, you doing stuff for clickbait and all that stuff. Yep. And so he spent too much time worrying about things outside of the building mm. as opposed to worrying about his play on the football field. So I wish he had taken this approach, Skip, five years ago. Maybe he'd be in a different situation than what he's in. But here's where we are. At least he's hopefully he's learning that. But that's not going to be the end. I'll be honest, Skip. Tom Brady's on social media. He plays just fine. Patrick Mahomes on social media. He plays just fine. Joe Burrow is on social media. He plays just fine. So if you think just getting off that, you're going to have to improve your play. Mm. Social media, yeah, it can affect you when you hear or you listen to what they're saying and you let it bother you. I think it bothers him that everybody is not like Norman, Oklahoma, applauding him. Oh, Baker, Heisman, Baker, Baker, Baker. No, 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 no. You won the Heisman. You deserve to win the Heisman. Cleveland Brown fans don't care anything about that. Can you lead us to the, can you get us to the playoffs? And can you get, get us far in the playoffs? Mm. That's what this is about, Skip. So I'm glad he's taking this approach. But that's the first step, not improving play, second step. Mm. I did not love this, and I still love Baker Mayfield as a football player, but I didn't love this because he he starts off his tweet of, what a great game I just watched between Mahomes and Josh Allen. And by the way, social media is toxic, and I'm off of it. So, so he's saying, hey, wasn't that a great game? Remember me? Yeah. Remember me? And now I'm going to be your center of attention because I'm off social media. It'll last like eight days maybe. Maybe what about six. commercials? You, you want him to give up no commercials. That's what you want him to give up. Way too many, too soon. <laughs> but he's making way too much money. He's, he's making Aaron Rodgers kind of state farm money because he owns Progressive, man. He, he must have sh- 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 big stock. stock in the company. I definitely think there are more Progressive commercials than Aaron Rodgers state farm I, I've commercials. never seen anything like it. And it's hard to live up to that because you're painting a bigger and bigger right. target on your back. But all I know for sure is he did have surgery, he did get his shoulder fixed, and it plagued him the whole year. And you will not give in to that, but all I know is over the last 11 games last year, he was sensational, coincidentally, after Odell got hurt. Mm -mm, mm -mm, No, Skip, I'm not going to let you live in the past. Let's talk about 2021. Okay, so he was sensational in his opening game this year at Kansas City. And then game, game number two against the Houston Texans, who had a pretty good defense, He lit them up, and then he lit up his own shoulder because he did throw a pick, and he did go try to tackle the guy with the ball. But but you won't won't tell the people at home what happened, that Mm. he had that big old lead against Kansas City, Mm. and it got whittled right down, Mm. and he had an opportunity. really good. And by the way, he finished off last year. You said he's got to go away in the playoffs. He went to Ben Roethlisberger and beat Roethlisberger and the Steelers. Six turnovers. 48 Six turnovers. 48 Six turnovers. Are you kidding me? Six turnovers. Had a QBR of 91. That was sensational. That's the first playoff game they'd won since 1993, and he was the toast of the town. I just saw saw my homeboy Mm. had a 96 QBR, Mm. so that ain't nothing. You know what Odell does to people? Would you believe that after Odell joined the Rams this year, over the last stretch of the year, would you believe that Matt Stafford led the NFL in interceptions over those games? Led the NFL. If you Paul, is it a coincidence or is it Odell? And let me ask you a question. He the, did it to Baker. He's come Sunday, doing it to come Sunday. Yep. Who's playing? Will the Browns be playing or will the Rams be uh, playing? 
Well, Baker's in a sling right now, so that's why he's not playing. <clears throat> so who was, who uh, uh, removed all those foots mm. from his butt that the quarterback, the opposing mm. quarterback put in that? Mahomes had one. Mm. Who else had one? Joey B? Who? Mm. I'm just trying to figure out who had all that. Who even, did that? Even you admitted that. Baker Mayfield should not have been playing this year. No, hold After on. game two, he should have just shut it down just trying, and gotten into. Let me ask you a question. I didn't hear you say anything when he threw that 65-yard Hail Mary against the Arizona Cardinals at the end of the half. I didn't hear nothing about mention about no labrum. How you throwing the ball 65 yards with a torn labrum? Guts. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I would have seen them guts. And his teammates were they saying They spilled it all he, over the field. Everybody just pulled his guts right up out of it. Yeah, warrior. That's it, all it I a warrior. No, yeah. no, 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 no. Mm-hmm. No, 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 Skip. You, yeah. d- in order to be a warrior, mm-hmm. you do have to win the war. You know what I'm saying? Oh, do you? Yeah, that's how that. it worked. Huh. That's how it works, Skip. Well, they called Dak a warrior. and he had Yeah, no, but you <laughs> called him that. Ain't nobody <laughs> called him that. Everybody. You called him that. He ain't no warrior. Yeah. Skip, he losing ga- Skip. How do you get to be a warrior if you lose in the game? Mm. Okay, you bring them back, but you lose the game. That's not warrior. Mm. Matthew Stafford, what he did, mm. that was warrior-esque. Was it really? Yeah. Warrior-esque. Yeah, you see him in that to Tom Brady? How, how do you explain this? He led the league in interceptions after Odell joined him. Whoa, 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 whoa. Huh. Did he lead the league in interceptions? Huh. No, he did not. Huh. He did not. Well, over that stretch, he did. Did he just go to? Did he just go to t- Tampa Bay? Mm-hmm. Made Tom Brady retire. Mm-hmm. Matthew Stafford, that's on his resume. I don't think he made, made him get up out of Dodge. Did he really? Made him hightail it out of town. Yeah, it sounded like Tom had already made up his mind. Guess what? We convinced him. Hmm. Are you we now? We convinced him. You're on oh, the Matthew Stafford. Oh, that's right, because Odell called you. No, after no, that no, game. no, no, no. He called me for the game. Yeah, no, did. Matthew Stafford. Mm. That's on his resume. Yeah, Baker Mayfield is going to haunt you next year because he is healthy. Ryan Tannehill made him leave New England. Yeah. Matthew Stafford made him leave the whole NFL, made him get up out of Dodge. Mm. I do want to see a healthy Baker Mayfield. And then we can go back to this discussion. I want to see what he's like. It's over, Jenny. He's healing up. Somebody used to love him. No, 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 no. No mercy. The Lakers are two-and-a-half-point underdogs. I got the 76ers tonight, according to Fox Bet Sportsbook. L.A. is coming off a big win against Brooklyn as they continue their Eastern Road trip. So, Shannon, what's LeBron's line? And do the Lakers get it done? I expect to be pretty much the same as what it's been, probably 37-7. and Um, but not 37 points, 37, 30 points, seven rebounds, seven assists, Got it. probably um, a block, two steals. Mm. But the guy that's been playing equal to LeBron James, if not a little better, is Joel Embiid. I've been telling you, he's, he's the best my, big man in basketball. No, Yoke is. I'll stop it. But I don't think they beat the Sixers. Huh. Okay, so now we can officially call him LeBron Westbrook. You win the box score, but you lose another game. Am I right? That's yeah. what he does, night after night. Efficient. 30, 33, 34. 52% shooting. Uh, averaging 29.1. 35.5% from three. It is pathetically no, not, bad. No. Career high, eight three-point attempts a game. You can't do it. We don't turn it over. Team. We don't turn it over. Yeah. That's all right. Mm. Give me what? give me three points, I take the Lakers. Six or Give me three. Again. Give me three points, and I take the Lakers. Two and a half. I I'll want three, though. No, no, I don't want no two and a half. I'll need three. Okay, done. I got it. See, yeah. I do that. Done. See, I get it. More see, I did three just to come to work. All right, we'll see how this wraps up Friday. We're back. Same time, guys. The herd is on now. Have a good rest of your day.